video, the 1982 Porsche 911 SE slant nose. This car has a modified front end and some rear quarter cutouts to make it look like that aggressive 80s, 90s style Flubach, however you say it, slant nose. So it's not a wide body, it's just a narrow body with some SC kind of cutouts or slant nose cutouts. It looks actually pretty cool. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do. Um, I'm not sure on the plans on the car, but I want to get it running. It's been sitting for about 20 years per the previous owner. He wanted to do some upgrades, clean it up a bit, so he put it in his garage. It was running and driving perfectly fine. Wanted to do some body work, took it off apart, and that's about it. So he kind of took off some paint on this end as well as the other quarter panel. I'll show you in a second. The interior is blue, which is pretty sick. White exterior, blue interior. I comes with brand new set of carpets, brand new carpet material, brand new bunch of parts. So a lot of times I buy these cars and they come with a bunch of random stuff. Uh, it kind of piles up. I actually put the pile of stuff over there. I am going to be basically getting it running. Uh, I did a little bit of troubleshooting with my brother. We pulled the sending unit, a little bit of rust at the bottom of the tank, the usual. So we'll take a look at that. We will try to get the car up in the air a little bit, drain it, put some new fuel in there, and then let that drain again, and then fill up with new fuel crank this bad boy once again and we'll see if it fires. I cut the AC pulley because it was seized. The AC uh, compressor seems to like be seized. So I cut that bad boy because it was not letting the motor turn. So after that, the motor was able to turn. So that's always a plus. Without further ado, I'm gonna do a quick walk around, show you a little bit more details on the car, then we'll get right into it. Let's go to the front. So as you can see, all the parts I mentioned, there's still tons in here while I already put a whole pallet load up there. So you can see the lower valence, the bumpers, some heating tubes. That is uh, windshields, front and rear windshields, even though there's a front windshield right there. Uh, we have some of the old carpeting, a lot of the bumper trim and pieces, and more. So there's a ton of stuff up there. Extra steering wheel, which I do not like. And then we go here. So we have extra floor mats. We have my piece of trim that I'm using to hold the hood up. Some sun visors, some new old stock parts, um, brake pads, fuel filters, uh, oil filters, the side markers. It is a ton of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this stuff out and then we'll look at that again. These spooks are super sweet. The previous owner painted these centers to match the car. Not rust. This is just adhesive. So a lot of people think that's rust, but it's not. Also the same thing with the interior, we'll just jump in here. Um, I might actually grab a light really quick. Bam. So as you can see, we got the blue interior, the dark blue upper dash, and the car actually comes with another set of door panels and these look perfectly fine. So I'm shocked that someone found another set of blue door panels. So the thing is to find the door panels, to find the whole interior, it's tough. The headliner looks like in super good shape. Um, and there's still a bunch of carpet material that it comes with. So it's really nice. I was worried about these wires. These wires were from actually an aftermarket radio. Uh, it does not look rusty. The floor pans look amazing. A lot of the stuff is just a Porsche adhesive from factory. All that stuff can get scraped up and replaced, which is super nice. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some parts back here. The car came with kind of a rubber whale tail that I don't think I'm gonna be using. Here's the motor. It's kind of standard stuff for an SC. 3.0 had that ac compressor like i mentioned i cut that belt just so i can free up the motor a little bit some duct tape work nothing unusual for these older style cars people don't understand at one point these cars were cheap so people did whatever they wanted to to kind of get them back on the road keep them on the road they didn't care about no fire hazards no nothing you can see the previous owner started to do some body work on the car uh, he actually said that this body work here started cracking when he left it out in below freezing kind of negative degree temperatures so he completely just took all that back which i'm not too mad about you can just see how nice the metal work is here there's no dings no damage no you can't even see where they welded uh any of the stuff in obviously you probably have to go kind of down there to see any of the splicing but as far as the body looks it's in great shape it's a very very nice body to kind of start uh the, the restoration on you can see more of that adhesive where they're doing some of the interior work. And yeah, here's the passenger side. It doesn't look too bad. So I know the lights work, the sunroof works. A lot of people like the slick top, but if the sunroof works, it's a not bad in my book. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean out the front a little bit, clean out this rear seat area. 
and I brought the vacuum, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a vacuuming, get the car up on those ramps and these jack stands. We'll go from there. Piece of cheese from 1982. So, bam, I'm in the back seat now. As you can see, super solid right here. All of this, I remember taking it out of my 912. Oh, it's fun stuff. That's a fun job. So, super solid rear area. All this looks pretty good. Let's see if we can lift this up a little bit. This might be actually a painted car from. Some like original color maybe or maybe it was white i don't know so find out more on that later so here's that so that's probably what most of the wires are it might be from the radio and this so even though there's one right there so yeah interesting so a lot of spare parts for this car which is not bad you know if someone needs one of these bad boys let me know seats are sitting on top of some more interior panels center console i'm gonna go ahead and get as much as i can out so far so good let's keep it going so I just removed the seat and a small piece of carpet here. Look at that thing, it's super solid. It's hard to find even a shell this solid these days. So there's a cut wire here. It looks like it leads down the center tunnel. I didn't pull this out because there's still wires connected. And this is the center console carpet. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up in here after I do the main thing and try to get this thing started. So this is kind of second priority. I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the rear, put the jack stands and then the front, I'm gonna put those ramps just to kind of get some elevation to make my life easier. Cannot use a lift right now because the Audi control arm went bye-bye. This Audi is actually for sale. Catch it at an insurance auction near you. So this thing actually runs and drives. My cousin uh, tried to do the Fast and Furious thing going underneath the semi, and it kind of just chopped him up a little bit. I'm just playing. So, so funny story. While I'm editing this, I just realized that I made that joke but the next day I came back to work on the slant nose, I actually went underneath the semi and basically messed up my daily driver. Kind of totaled it, but I'll be able to fix it. But ah, let's keep going. This thing actually is a project that is just a little bit too involved. So it's actually gonna be going on Copart uh, this week. So keep your eyes out for it, bid on it. Bing, 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 bing. I got two pairs of pants on, so if you see any of my pants showing, it's my sweatpants underneath, because it's cold out. Give me a little break. I'm only using this to support the car. So I can these numbers. have the rear end lifted a tiny bit also to keep it somewhat level get some more uh, height on this bad boy i'm gonna go ahead and slide underneath drain the gas and yeah start the fill process to get some of that crap out and i might save this tank actually because it doesn't look too bad I'll take a look at it in a second was well, this car some kind of silver color some silver off gold color i don't know i need to look into the original color unfortunately there's no door sill plate which typically comes right here. So that's missing. So maybe I can find it a different way where I'll keep digging. But yeah, there's no no code. So I, I don't know what the original color was because this engine bay does not make me think it's white. Solid, solid battery tray area. Solid, solid. I mean, look at this. Smuggler's box. Man, that's beautiful. A lot of mouse poop, obviously. So let's check out the sending unit. I already got it unbolted. 
Slides, you know, normal. A little rusty, crusty down there, but that's what we're working with right there. Let the camera focus. So, yep, that's as much rust as we got down there. The rest of the tank was clean. I'm gonna go ahead and close it back up, go from the bottom, and I hope that there's a drain. Yes, there's a plug right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that, take off this plate right here, this cover guard, to get where the fuel pump area is. Oh, wow, beautiful spider, mothball looking things. This area looks pretty sweet too, nice and oily. So at least there's some oil in there. Wow, there's so much spider webs. So I'm gonna go up underneath there and yeah, start getting this bad boy drained. Lefty, let me see. I hope there's not more fuel than what I have in the bucket worth. That would suck. Oh, mm. oh yeah, it's going everywhere. Nice. Nice. Ew, check this out. Now that is also, ew. So there's that strainer at the end of this fill plug or the end of the drain plug and it's nasty so not surprised um so as this is draining i'm gonna go ahead and add some more to just kind of get anything that's like sediments and floating around there to just drain out as well oh yeah i got plenty of room so there wasn't that much gas in there which is good i'm gonna go ahead and just throw some more in there and then yeah end up plugging in here shortly i don't want it to get too crazy oh that's not bad i thought it would be worse than that it's already clearing up pretty good, so that's good to see. So nothing exciting there right now, it's just draining. I'm gonna let as much drain out as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum. Getting some crap out of the engine bay as well, that way two things are going down at once. Once I'm done with that, I think it'll just be trickling. I'm gonna plug it back up. I don't think I'm gonna unplug anything right now because if I break a hose, break a line, I'm kind of screwed. So I'd rather just put some fresh fuel in there and then go ahead and try to crank it. I got a new battery sitting somewhere over here. I'm gonna go put it on the car and yeah, see if it fires up, that'd be crazy. So I did a little quick cleaning in the front only. I had to take a quick call and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in. Plugs back in, fill up the tank with the remaining gas I have, and we'll see what happens when I put the battery in. So it's pretty exciting because you never know what's gonna happen. So fingers crossed, everything's good. What is this? Little fuse. I might end up draining this later. That should be enough to get something to go. Battery's on, fuel's in, car has power. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up in the rear so we can see uh, what happens after this thing cranks. Let's hope for the best. We're looking for a lot of cool sounds from that thing. So I don't know if I hear the fuel pump. No rats in that but <laughs> rat turds. Man, that sound is just no go. Something in here. So as you heard, she's a non-firer. I need to probably check for spark. I need to check for fuel. I kind of got my hopes up, but I'm not surprised that it doesn't run. Sounds like a lot of them do when they don't run. I didn't bring my spark plug removal tool that I like to use. The car was building oil pressure, which is a good sign. Just the fuel pump's probably trashed or something the sending. There's a bunch of peanuts in the engine bay. Just for giggles, I swapped the horn main relay for the fuel pump main relay. And I can almost hear the car just fire up. Not. So it was a no-go with getting the car to run, I'm not surprised. Car is sitting for so long, it, it needs a lot more TLC and love to make it actually operate. I need to check the spark plugs. I just pulled off one of them and that thing was like stuck on there. The rubber kind of guard around the actual plug wire was like super sticky and 
it was tough to get out. Um, so yeah, I'm assuming they're all gonna be like that. I need to remove the AC compressor. I gotta remove a bunch of hoses, and it's not as simple as some of the earlier cars, at least the 27 or other cars. Like, there's not much to get the spark plugs out. 3 is a little bit more, and I guess the newer you get, the harder it gets. Uh, excuse me, because I'm um, I'm eating my wife's leftover Chipotle. I haven't eaten since lunchtime, and it's almost another 12 hours later. So, um, spark plugs. Check the fuel pump that it actually works. I uh, check the relay, it's fine. It's, the fuses are fine. So I'm assuming it's either the fuel pump that's bad, spark plugs are not getting spa spark, the coil wires are trashed, the distributor is off. Uh, it could be a bunch of stuff. So I need to kind of troubleshoot that. I don't want to do that tonight because if I start, I will be here till like 2 a.m. because that's how I am. I don't want to smell any mice poop anymore. Cleaned up a little bit. I was wearing gloves, so I'm pretty straight. I'm gonna go ahead and just munch a little bit, give me a, t a little bit of energy so I can actually clean up, uh, and then call it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of like a run through of what I do when I get these cars, or at least what I try to do. I still really haven't done the digging, digging I need to because there's still boxes that I haven't really digged through, but I'll do that on my own time. And then I'm gonna look at, into the glove box, maybe the key to the wheel is in there, as well as any documentation. It's missing the color code kind of in play. Uh, I think this color, this might have actually been champagne, some champagne color instead of the white that it's currently. So the white's not the original color, which I'm not surprised. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig a little bit, find out what I need to find out. This car, I'm unsure of what its future holds. You know, it's the last car I kind of purchased. I still want to try to get it uh, to where I want it to be, but the Targa needs a little bit of love before next spring. And the 77, as you guys know, I want to keep that one for a little bit. Unless someone makes me a ridiculous offer, then I might just focus on the Targa. You never know with these cars. Someone might want to pay an outrageous amount for a car that they really like, and then I'm down to sell it. You know, I come across these often enough to where I know that I'm not gonna be attached with it. Um, there, there are cars in the past that if I would have bought in, I probably would have never sold. But you know what they say, you know, there's a price for anything. Hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to stay tuned, drop a like, drop a comment, and I'll catch you guys next time. As always, be blessed and be superish.